This is the story of the Persian Gulf oil spill. In 1990, a man by the name of Sudan Hussein ordered the evacuation of Kuwait. Why? Let's take a closer look. Here is Iraq, and here is Kuwait. They both border the Persian Gulf. In the Middle East, oil is a very precious resource, so Hussein was naturally very protective of this. He accused Kuwait of drilling for crude oil along their border and demanded $30 billion in relief for Iraq's foreign debt as compensation. Also, instead of calmly negotiating, he sent troops into Kuwait as well. With war, small disputes often escalate into larger ones, causing powerful allies to become involved, such as the United States. Feeling threatened, the countries called upon their allies for assistance, and on November 29, 1990, the Gulf War began. Two months later, Iraqi forces dumped several tankers of oil into the Gulf as an act of environmental terrorism against the U.S. and caused one of the largest oil spills ever recorded in history. Eight million barrels of oil, which is equal to around 1.5 million tons, oozed into the Gulf, which nearly doubles the amount of the BP oil spill. In the spill zone of the Gulf, the water's depth averaged around 5 meters, sometimes stretching for 5 kilometers wide. This was the location of many intertidal ecosystems, and now it was covered in a 60-mile-wide slick of oil. Many vulnerable regions in the Gulf were targeted, such as coral reefs, mangrove forests, and the breeding grounds for the endangered green turtle. The shallow water of the region also made a perfect breeding ground for birds and fish, which ultimately were the most affected organisms due to this spill. 500 species of fish suffered from this spill, and around 30,000 birds were estimated to be dead. Since the primary consumers in the food chain were widely affected by the spill, many other species suffered as well, such as dolphins and other marine mammals, which are vulnerable to the toxicity presented in their prey from the crude oil. And a year after the spill, the reproduction rate of fish and birds were reduced by 50%. There seemed to be no hope for the Persian Gulf, as cleanup efforts were severely delayed because of the war. However, there is a brighter side to this story. Flash forward to 2008, and the fish and bird population had returned to their original numbers before the spill. The outcome of this spill were not as severe as expected. Here's the reason why. Although half of the oil had evaporated in the months following the spill, there was still a lot of work that was needed to be done. This is where bioremediation comes in. The composition of crude oil consists of a ratio of two hydrogen atoms to one carbon atom. These are called hydrocarbons, and the most toxic among these are aromatic hydrocarbons. Microorganisms in the environment, such as Marinobacter and Pseudomonas, are responsible for breaking hydrocarbon molecules down. They ingest the particles and metabolize them into compounds that are much simpler, such as water or hydrogen peroxide. The bacteria that is responsible for this process contain two different enzymes, oxidase and catalase. Catalase is responsible for the decomposition of the hydrocarbon molecules, and oxidase transfers the hydrogen molecules to oxygen molecules to make common water-soluble particles. These microorganisms thrive in locations that are rich in oxygen and nutrients, such as nitrogen and sulfur. They are vital for the bacteria's growth and survival, and the dust swept in from the gulf from the land are rich in those compounds which can naturally promote bacteria growth. It is also a source of nutrients for cyanobacteria, which increases the oxygen levels due to photosynthesis. Oxygen is a factor that can speed up the process of biodegradation, although it's possible to be done anaerobically. Since much of the oil has sunk to the bottom, tillers were used on the sand to increase oxygen to the microbes. Another factor working in favor for the bioremediation of the Persian Gulf is the climate. The temperatures in the Middle East are generally very warm, which help the bacteria thrive. This is one of the main reasons why the Gulf War oil spill has a lesser impact than the Exxon Valdez, since in colder climates, the bacteria metabolize the hydrocarbons much slower. The method used to speed up the bioremediation process was biostimulation, as adding nutrients to the environment was less harmful than bioaugmentation, which involved introducing a new species of bacteria. This would induce competition among the various species of bacteria, and the new species are much less adapted to the conditions compared to the native species. Although bioremediation was not the major factor in reducing the amount of crude oil in the Gulf, the
The natural process of the native bacteria helped the Persian Gulf recover from the worst oil spill ever recorded. As marine specialist Nicholas Pilcher said, what they found and what they found in other places in the world is that nature does recover. So our pollution problem isn't all hopeless. With scientific advancements in bioremediation and the forces of nature fighting to heal itself, we will find a way to restore the earth to its original glory, one site at a time.